Welcome to another great episode of Grow Rugby. My name is Gift, Gift Tommy Bailey, and I'm here to bring you all your rugby news and information. I'm happy for another great week to just be able to be here, talk to you guys, enjoy some time, get to watch some rugby, and tell you guys about it if you haven't gotten a chance to see it. And even if you have, I just want to have a chance to be able to show it to you again because you know what? It's just that awesome. We got a great show today. We got a great amount of highlights for you guys. And we got some news going on that will lead to your interest. So let's go without further ado. Let's go over some of the games from this past weekend. Taking it to the first game this week, it took us all the way out to Nashville, Tennessee, where Vanderbilt hosted University of Tennessee for the second SCRC matchup for the teams. University of Tennessee opened up first blood with two scores by scrum half Drew Stone. Winger J.P. Price was able to use his speed around the outside to lift the Vols up to 19-0. Josh Landon would not be held down, and a lot of the power came in from the forwards as he was able to skirt through the middle of that defense, putting the Vols up another 24-0. But he was not even done yet. Landon was able to take the ball out again, taking it through the outside and passing inside back to flanker Connor Kimner right before half, putting up the Vols 33-0 at half. The University of Tennessee would go on to win this game 60-3, dominating this win and getting a 2-0 record on the season as they enter into their bye week. Vanderbilt dropping to 0-2 as they head in to a game against University of Georgia at home. Taking it down to Life University in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, the Atlanta Harlequins hosted the D.C. Furies for the Women's Premier League matches this past weekend. Atlanta Harlequins coming off of a win against the New York RFC 41-5, and D.C. Furies sitting at 1-1 one one in the standings, both teams looking to try and change up their luck just a bit. Atlanta Harlequins will come out, with, come out strong, with putting up the first scores for the game, but the DC Fury would not be held down. They ended up scoring back, putting this even 7-7. The Fury would end up winning this game 24-17, giving the Harlequins a 1-2 record, pushing the Fury up to 2-1. Both teams have a bye week next week and will have a chance to recollect themselves. Harlequins will be playing the New York RFC again in New York, as well as DC Furies playing Twin Cities at home. We were able to head out to beautiful Tallahassee, Florida for our feature game this week to watch FSU women taking on the fourth ranked FIU women's team. FIU would take complete control of this game early and often, setting the momentum quickly for this match. Winger Ashante Stroman would strike first in what would be a barrage of scores. Scoring leaders for this game would be FIU's inside center Brittany Broomfield with five tries, Stroman with four tries, 20 points, and winger Brittany Wilcox with three tries and 15 points. Scrum half Lily Eights talked about what advantage this team had over FSU. Um, definitely veterans. Well, last year we had about six rookies as opposed to this year two. Now those rookies are veterans. Um, for instance, our tight head prop, Carrie Ann, um, she took over today. She did very, very well. It's her second year. So, you know, they have a whole year of experience. They went to nationals. Now they're pumped. So it's more so them now, another year of experience. So we're, we're expecting them to be veterans on the field. Not just myself, not just Eileen, not just a few other girls. I've been playing rugby for about two, three years now. So now that they got that year of experience, we're looking for them to do as what we did, to continue our legacy. It takes for us to get the ball out. Honestly, we crash, we crash, we get our forwards, you know, that momentum, and then that sets up for our backs and that get the ball out and let them work. Um, once we get it out, let them use their speed and we go from there. The FSU versus FIU game can actually be caught here, right here at GiftTimeRugby.com. You can check it out, watch the full game. We do more of these. This week we're off, but 
will be at LSU versus Auburn on October 12th. Check it out. Here's some other scores that happened around this week. In the Atlantic Rugby Premiership, Life University was able to take down Boston University 42 to 10. Arkansas State was able to blow out Glendale Raptors 59 to 24. In D1A, University of Texas was able to take down Texas Christian University 27-0. Oklahoma Sooners took out the Baylor Bears 57-12. In D1 2 way, University of Alabama was able to blow out Auburn in the rivalry game 49 to 7. University of Central Florida took down FSU 24 5. Kennesaw State blowing out Georgia Tech 55 to 7. University of North Carolina taking down UVA 27 to 12. In D2, University of Louisiana shut out Spring Hill College 59 0. In East Carolina University took down Elon University 32-21. And Appalachian State shut out Western Carolina 88-0. Let's turn ourselves to some rugby news that's happening around the nation. This week, Sean Pittman of the USA Eagles announced his retirement from the game. The ripe old age of 26, Pittman has capped 30 times with 23 starts at prop. Pittman last played his last full game against Canada in Charleston for the Rugby World Cup qualifier back in August 2013. Since then, he has dealt with a lot of injuries and had a bit of contention when it came to the Summer Series. It's sad to see him go, but you know we're moving on. he's moving on to bigger and better things. There will be plenty of talent being taught under his wise understanding. This is a guy who's at least had a chance to play overseas, playing two years with the London uh, Welsh, Mr. Pittman, you will be missed. Last week, we got a chance to talk to you guys about the final roster spots for the USA Eagles Sevens teams heading out to Gold Coast Sevens for October 11th and 12th. There were 28 guys that were remaining after three high performance camps, and you know what? Now there's only 12. That's right. Coach Mike Friday has made the final list of the USA 7's roster, and it is an intense one. The USA Eagles look to have added a lot of speed onto this team, and it should be interesting to watch. We have some notable faces that are on there, such as Carlin Isle, Zach Test, Maka Unufa, and uh, Nick Edwards. But there's some new faces that came in here that I think are super exciting. I'm most excited about uh, 1823 and Tiger rugby player Perry Baker. This guy is a speed demon. Got a chance to watch him over the summer during the USA Club Sevens Championships. Even took on my, my home state team, New Orleans. And... This kid is ridiculous. I think he equates to as much speed as Carlin Isles and is going to be a nice one-two punch for the U.S. to have Isles and Baker coming off both sides, just hitting simultaneously. We want to toss a little bit of uh, gift time rugby commemoration over two players here in this region. Uh, first off, Dylan Boost of the USA South Panthers U19 team. Congratulations to him for being selected onto the USA South 20 uh, uh, U20 team. That's a big deal. He was one of the captains and uh, one of the leaders for the USA South Panthers when they went against uh, Jamaica in the NACRA tournament, leaving them at uh, fifth place for the tournament. So congratulations to Dylan Boost. Also want to send out a congratulations to a Mr. Chris Millage as he was selected for Star Rugby Sevens that will be played out in Australia. Had a great piece written about him. We can actually check it out in uh, the links down below. Uh, but we want to give our, our pardon, you know, commemoration to you guys. Your, your skill and your efforts are definitely recognized. Good luck in this next endeavor for both of y'all. 
Well, y'all, that's all that we have for today. I want to thank you for watching the show, taking the time to share, spread this, comment, give suggestions, whatever it is, because every little bit counts, and we love everything that you will say to us, and we want to make sure that we can provide you with the accurate and positive news for rugby here in the States and the South and just regionally all together. Let you guys know, if you have any film of your game and you want us to be able to feature it, you guys can actually send it to us. You can either email it at gifttimeproduction at gmail.com or you can find us at www.gifttimerugby.com or like us on facebook facebook.com slash gifttimerugby or finally follow us on twitter at gifttimerugby i want to say my name is gift gift time a Bailu. you guys have a great day and don't forget if you're gonna live the rugger life don't forget to grow rugby, grow rugby. Grow rugby.